How's it going everyone and welcome back to the Enclave, South Africa's premier firearms education channel. So today we are moving on with our shotgun for business purpose handbook with module 4 fundamentals of shooting. So we'll start on page 26. Uh, super hot, probably going to be sweating throughout this video, please forgive me, it's like 30 degrees in here. Um, but without any more said than that, let's get into Module 4. So we are back. The learning outcomes for module four, eh, it's quite extensive, but it's nothing too crazy. So you basically want to be able to demonstrate the standing stance for the shotgun, the kneeling stance for the shotgun. You want to be able to demonstrate the correct grip, which is in either stance. You need to be able to demonstrate um, or explain the difference um, between cover and concealment. So you basically need to be able to explain yeah, the difference between something that's going to stop a bullet versus something that's going to hide you from an assailant. But we'll get into that soon. And then you need to explain the two main difficulties of nighttime or low light shooting. So, grand schemes, it is not that difficult. Uh, you will see in your manuals that there are actually six and seven. So, you need to demonstrate torch techniques and you need to demonstrate the correct use of barricades. I would recommend that you just read through those sections, understand what they're looking for, but you are not most likely, unless your instructors are real hard on. Uh, you, you're not going to get tested on those things. So, in fact, you barely get tested on the kneeling. I, I think you do one practical um, in a standing position and then in a kneeling position, and that's pretty much that. So, anyways, let us get into standing stance. So, for the shotgun, we are going to use basically a weaver stance. The same as you would do for a rifle, the same as you would do for a semi-automatic rifle. So basically you would stand, I will show you images of this because it's obviously quite difficult for me to show you here. You would stand feet under your shoulders, take one step back with your right leg or your dominant leg. If you're left-handed, you would take one step back with your left leg. Obviously the weapon would be on the opposite side. And that is your standing stance. Kneeling stance, again, I will show you images in the book, is literally feet under your shoulders and you drop your dominant leg down to a knee. That is it. Um, alternative, or alternatively, if you want to rest your elbow or whatever on your leg, you would drop your non dominant leg, so your left leg. But for me, I always find personally when I'm kneeling on my right leg, it always just feels more natural than when I'm kneeling on my left leg. So that's what I go to. I would recommend you see what works best. They normally say drop your non-dominant leg, but I find that developing muscle memory or training people on a non-dominant eye or a non-dominant grip or non-dominant whatever is a lot more difficult so i would recommend use whatever feels most comfortable for most people that will actually be their dominant leg that still brings you down and you will still be able to get into a kneeling position like that so either way you're not going to be penalized whatever feels most comfortable um, that is pretty much the stances Oh, I said I would show you images of those. It is here in your book, obviously. But there will be the images. 
for your kneeling stance. They actually drop the dominant leg as well, like I said. But I feel like I prefer to rest my dominant arm on my leg if I'm going to be resting. So what I do is actually the opposite of this. If I were to be resting my arm, I would be resting this arm. The right arm, the arm holding the weapon, not the secondary arm. Um, that is what I find most comfortable. So then we need to demonstrate the correct grip. The correct grip is the same as what it was for rifles. So we have a four point grip. We have our main hand, which is on the grip near trigger, mechanisms, actions, etc. We have our off hand, which will be on the foregrip of the shotgun or the fore end of the shotgun. Whether it be pump action, semi auto, that doesn't matter. Your hand's always going to be in the front here if you've got a grip or however you choose to do it, C clamp, whatever. And you then want shoulder is your third point of contact and your cheek is your fourth point of contact. So we have a four point grip, dominant, secondary, shoulder, cheek. And that will give you the most stable grip platform for a shotgun. I can say um, your cheek position, I have noticed with shotgun only, that what can happen is with the recoil, it actually shifts up just enough on my cheek to push my, my ear pro up. And I could tell you, you'll know your ear pro is no longer on when shooting a shotgun after the first shot. I actually had a headache for like two days because I think I was shooting a bullpup shotgun. So the action was like right here and it basically pushed my ear pro up and I thought, okay, we're good, we're good. And I took that next shot and -wee, that was painful. Uh, I, I will remember that shot. Um, anyways, so cover and concealment next up. Basically, like I say, I'm sweating. I bet you it's 30 degrees in here. It's 30 degrees in my lounge. Anyway, so cover versus concealment. Basically, concealment is something that hides your position from the opposition or from the threat, whatever you want to call it. Whereas cover is something that is actually going to pr protect you from incoming projectiles. So if we use something like a car, for example, we'll do this testing. It's going to be very fun to show you this. But for now, we'll just talk about it. In cars, you have a few very solid components. Your mags. In some cars, some cars not so much, but we'll get to that. Um, your mags, your brake discs, and your engine components. Everything else is pretty much concealment. Like you see in movies, people will open a car door and hide behind the car door. All that's going to do is potentially, if the guy's not all there, hide the position of your body behind that door. Although anyone with half a brain will know if your head is here, your body is here. That you, I don't have to shoot here and think I'm going to hit you. I just shoot directly under your head. But that is the difference, is that if I'm standing behind an engine block or I'm standing behind the rear of the vehicle crouched down where a good half of my body is behind the wheel assembly, things like your shocks will deflect bullets, things like your brake calipers should catch them, uh, things like mags, a good thick rim should catch them, that would be considered cover. Something that is actually going to protect you in the event that a bullet comes directly towards your body. Whereas concealment, you'll hide yourself. You might give yourself a tactical advantage, but you're not giving yourself any actual protection from incoming projectiles. So that is the difference between cover and concealment. The final thing we need to talk about is the difference, or, or sorry, the, the two main downsides to low light or no light shooting con conditions. And that is sight picture and target acquisition. So in the dark, obviously, it's going to be a lot more difficult without a torch or some form of illumination 
to identify the difference between your neighbor or someone actually trying to climb over your wall. So you hear a noise outside, you go outside without a torch, you see someone at your wall, you take a shot. No, oh, it's just the neighbor doing whatever at the wall. Obviously, that's a problem. You're now in trouble. So you always want to be able to identify the targets correctly. Second to that, we have sight picture. So when you come to actually, oh, of course, I don't have <coughs> any actual firearms with me. All I do, just give me one second. Oh. So, in the event of no light or low light situations, if you're using something like a red dot, obviously that becomes a little easier. But with traditional iron sights, it will become very difficult to be able to get that proper alignment of your posts together. So those will be your two main struggles when it comes to nighttime or low light shooting. There are actually a few places that offer low light or night shooting courses or training. Um, I do recommend those. I recommend any form of training. Knowledge is power. Um, it is always one of those things where you want to try and experience it before you're in a life-threatening situation because at that point it's a lot more difficult to learn things on the fly you know it's better to have things already in the tank already in knowledge already in your muscle memory um, rather than trying to figure out oh damn how do i see my sights at night um so yeah that is pretty much the Module 4, Fundamentals of Shooting. Um, hope you guys have learned something. If you want to add something or ask any questions, please feel free to do so in the comments down below. Um, and always please like, comment, share, subscribe. Those things really do help the channel grow. It looks like we have like 1-7 subscribers now. Thank you so much for everyone who's hit that subscribe button. It really is the only way to help the channel grow. Um, likes, comments, those things all help. But this, that, that little red subscribe button is the best way you guys can help out at this point. So once again, or as always, <laughs> if you have more time, please check out another video here on the side. And if not, thank you for joining us for this video. And as always, peace out.